Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. In this episode, I am going to run through what I want to call Hidden C++17. This episode is going to have very little actual live coding, if any, but I'm going to just do a kind of whirlwind tour of the things that I think are probably being overlooked that have been added to C++17, and these are all standard library features. So let's get started. We are going to be in the CVP reference for the most part, which is en.cvpreference.com for the English version specifically, which I believe is the most complete version of it. And we're going to start here in standard regex, which we've been talking about every now and then over the last few episodes. And the first thing that we want to note is that a new constant has been added to the flags that you can pass to a regex to now say multi-line. So in C++17, the caret now matches the beginning of a line and dollar matches the end of a line if the ECMA script engine is selected. So that's not the begin of the string and the entire end of the string. It is the begin and end of a line inside that string. Next up is a couple of very small changes to shared pointer in C++17. So we are looking at the shared pointer documentation here. And we see that shared pointer now gets an index operator, which can give you access to an individual item in an array if your shared pointer contains an array. And then we also have this small little addition, reinterpret pointer cast. So we've had these um, helpers, static pointer cast, dynamic, and const pointer cast, that take a shared pointer and do exactly what you would expect it to do for a static cast, dynamic cast, and const cast in C++ 98, but in the shared pointer world, returns back to you a shared pointer thing that participates in the ownership of the original thing that you cast. Well, C++ 17 adds this reinterpret pointer cast, and now I don't know how useful this is because I'm thinking reinterpret cast, this is something that we're generally told not to use, and it's kind of a best practice, in fact, to not use it because it's very easy to introduce undefined behavior because you're just saying, hey, here's some bits. I want you to interpret them as completely different bits. And now we also have shared pointer, which is a fairly heavyweight thing for, mem for memory management. So we're going to combine these kinds of two things and, well, there you have it. Reinterpret pointer cast is added in C++17. Now, this is an interesting one, I think, and it's standard as const. And basically, if you pass in a reference to a thing, it gives you back a const reference to that thing. And the possible implementation here in CPP reference is, well, it's very straightforward because all you're doing is adding const reference to the non-const reference thing that was passed to you. And notice that if you pass in a anything that's not a reference, essentially, or cannot be converted to a reference, it's going to be deleted and the code won't compile at all. And as far as examples, um, I'm not entirely sure where you'd use it, although basically I could see it as a way to avoid const cast in some cases where you need const cast just to add const to something or if you're trying to use the add const t like you are here. This is a, perhaps a handy utility for simply, well, making a reference const. Now, getting more interesting here is this two cars, which is a way of converting from a number to a string, essentially. So you can pass in the begin and end character. So if you've got a vector of cars or a string that has been pre-sized to some number of characters. Notice this won't size anything for you. It'll simply fill up the space that you have given it. And you pass in the value. And the value can be lots of different things and the base that you want. Or you can pass in a format. So scientific or hex or general fixed point 
that kind of thing. So you can pass in your integers, your floats, doubles, long doubles, whatever have you, and fill a string. Now, this is interesting to me because it always assumes that it uses the default C locale. And the two string that exists currently in C++ for an integer uses the currently defined locale, which means that it can actually be shockingly expensive and not necessarily do what you want it to do if you're expecting it to give you, for example, something that could be fed into another program, which is going to expect a dot for the decimal point instead of a comma, like a European locale might give you, then, well, this might be your answer. Now, the disappointing thing here is that it is not constexpr. And since the fixed, the locale is fixed as default C, then I would say that there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to make them constexpr. But I could be wrong, and I might get comment on the video for why I'm wrong here. And now the flip side of the two cars is from cars. And you can pass in the begin and end of your characters that you want to um, convert into a number of some sort and you pass in that value by reference here. And I think it's interesting to note that this does not use standard string view, which I would expect it to use, since string view is now supposed to be our language of how we talk about strings in C++ 17. But regardless, it does not. And it suffers from the same issue that I mentioned in two cars, that they aren't constexpr. And I know these are both functions that are perfectly capable of being constexpr if you do not have to load the locale from the operating system. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.